It's funny how you never really expect some of the opportunities that come your way. I have to go to Belgium for work, and I thought I'd tack on a few extra days to embark on a journey I've thought about for over a decade. I want to retrace my father's footsteps up the Ruhr Valley during World War II. He wasn't there very long, especially if you consider the fact that he had been in the military almost two years by the time he landed in France in 1945, and he never really talked about it at all. I guess the stress and trauma of battle affects everyone a little differently. So this trip will be a chance to get some perspective, a better understanding of the sacrifice he made for his family and his country. Dad arrived in the port of Le Havre, France on January 1st, 1945, seven months after D-Day. By now, the front had moved 400 miles east near the German border and the Siegfried Line. He was a staff sergeant in the 8th Armored Division, spending most of his time running an M3 half-track and then an M4 Sherman tank. For a month, they trekked across northern France, working their way towards the front. In February, they arrived in the Dutch town of Roermond, where they were ordered to support General Montgomery and the British 7th Armored Divisions pushed across the Ruhr River in Germany, Operation Grenade. Four weeks earlier, the German army had lost the Battle of the Bulge in the Ardennes Forest to the south and the war was becoming an end game of defeat. They were now doing everything they could to slow the advance of the Allied forces. They blew up bridges and destroyed the dams on the Ruhr, flooding the valley. But there was a bridge in the German village of Hilfarth that had been mined but was still intact. It was the crossing point the 7th Armor needed. The 134th Infantry stormed into Hilfarth the night of February 24th with fierce fighting around the bridge continuing into the next day. So behind me here is the bridge in Hilfarth, Germany. We're probably about 10 kilometers uh, into Germany. This bridge was taken by the Allied forces in uh, uh, February 25th. Dad crossed this bridge a day later, February 26th. Uh, it had been a hard fought battle, but this is where the Allied forces were able to establish a bridgehead by keeping this bridge from being uh, blown up by the retreating uh, um, German army. So from here, Dad crossed the bridge with his men and their uh, equipment and basically took a left, started heading north up the Ruhr Valley. The division would roll 30 miles along the flank of the Siegfried Line in less than a week, capturing 23 towns in two days. Dad and his men would have faced sporadic artillery, mortar, and small arms fire. Roads and fields were loaded with mines, every house and building a potential fort. So two days later, February 28th, Dad and his men landed somewhere near here, or in Wegberg, Germany. My guess is they weren't spending a lot of time hanging around in the town. If for no other reason, there probably wasn't a whole lot of town left after all of the battles. But I would also imagine they were trying to make certain that their tanks and their armaments had some cover. So they spent a lot of time in the woods and the surrounding forests to make certain that they weren't a target. But they were making their way north working their way up the Ruhr Valley. So it's easy to imagine that Dad may have seen a view that looked exactly like this. We're here in Amern, Germany. And 69 years to the day, February 28th, he was here. Well, probably out in the woods somewhere. But he was here with the same weather, same blue skies maybe, or probably rain. And he was waiting for his orders to move north, heading up towards a battle he didn't know was going to happen in Saint Hubert. So we've landed in Lobrick, Germany. It's about 17 kilometers north, and it's the next day for Dad, March 1st. This town is surprisingly intact. One of the things we've noticed is that as we've moved further north, more and more of the original architecture has survived. You can imagine just how bad the fighting was back in Hilfarth, because really, there's nothing left of that town. It's all been rebuilt in the last 50 years. But up here, we're seeing more and more homes and buildings from the 16th, 17th, and 18th century. With the exception of the church, 
looks like the cathedral got flattened because it's been rebuilt and I'm not certain it's all that much better for wear. Dad's last morning in Germany would have started in the woods near here, Refrath, Germany. It's doubtful he woke up to the sound of the bells. It's more likely that what he woke up to were a new set of orders, orders to take three small towns just to the north and east, one of which was St. Hubert. The orders were to capture Sailhausen, Vinbrook, and St. Hubert in an advance towards Moors. They were held up at the Niers Canal, waiting for engineers to bridge the gap. On that last day, dawn would have broken probably like this, flat and gray, kind of cold and wet. It's cold here right now, let me tell you. I can't imagine what it was like then, and what, if I remember correctly, was one of the coldest winters on record. We're here at the Nears Canal, outside of Griefrath, and the guys would be heading north. He landed here, Saint Hubert, Saint Hubert if you look at it on a map. I would imagine it was probably in the morning since this was the first of three objectives for he and his men. They had been traveling north and basically took a left into town. I don't think they anticipated the level of resistance. March 3rd was the beginning of a larger battle known as Ruhr Pocket. Now that battle wasn't going to conclude for a number of weeks with hundreds of thousands of Germans being captured. Today, well, Dad was going to be facing basically three types of soldiers. One of them was the Volkstrom. Now, these were veterans of World War I. They were much older. These were not frontline troops. And the other was Hitlerjungend, or Hitler Youth. Some of these guys could be as young as 12. Basically, Germany was desperate, and they were throwing everybody at the oncoming Allied forces. The one that Dad really had to pay attention to, though, was the Panzer Lehr Group. Now, the Panzer Lehr Group was the elite of elites in uh, uh, tanks. These folks had had tremendous success in North Africa, but they had the heck beaten out of them in Baston. So they were only a shell of what they once were. All the same, they had Tiger tanks. Now, this was a tank that had the best armaments and, and 88 millimeter guns. They were, in essence, built to respond to what the Soviets had on the Eastern Front, but the Americans and the Allies had nothing that could match the Tigers. The story that I heard, and I don't know exactly how much of it is true, is that Dad and his men came in, ran into the Tigers, and the Tigers basically shot all of their stuff out from underneath them, tanks, half-tracks, everything. It was a fish in a barrel. And they were scrambling trying to get cover, so they came here to this church for cover. They ran in, and a tank came in and dropped a shell into them inside the church. The story I heard was that it literally came in through the uh, uh, front of the church, through over the altar. And that makes perfect sense because that's where we are here now. And if you look, you can see that that's a section of the church that's been rebuilt. You can see older brick on the side. But as Dad described it, the barrel coming in and dropping something right into the men inside the church it was right through that section right there, and that's the section that's been uh, uh, fixed after the war. All of the soldiers hiding in the church were killed, with the exception of my father and one other GI, who dragged my dad to safety. Medic stabilized his leg wound, packed him on a field ambulance, and moved him behind the front. His war was done, only one week into action and nine weeks from the end of European hostilities. I guess he was lucky, he was going home. I'll never really know how he felt about it. There you go, from Hillfarth Bridge to St. Tuber. It was an amazing journey for my dad, I know, but it was also an amazing journey for me. I'm so pleased that I was able to connect real places to things that had only been names on a map before.